Hello guys. Um, in this video, I'd like to quickly start with preferences because this is something that if you set it up correctly from the beginning, like you don't have to change it ever again. Uh, only if you reinstall your software to change your preferences, you just go to edit preferences. And in here you have multiple tabs and the stuff that I turn on and off, uh, I mean, turn on once is focus on mouse enter, which basically does something like this. When you move your cursor on top of a, uh, workspace, like a box, like a tab, it will make it red around. So it highlights the active window. So you don't have to first click it to make it active. So that's handy for me. One of the most important, um, options to turn on is this default separate position for pegs. Uh, if you're not sure what it does, you can always go to Tunboom documentation, like they explained it better than I ever could. But if you're wondering what it does, basically it makes sure that any drawing that you create is automatically set to separate rather than 3D path. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that uh, causes problems a lot. Um, especially when you start rigging and depending on the style of the project you're working on, if you're not using any 3D in your shots, like you don't need the 3D path thing, so you can go with separate. I mean, it's also for animation and other stuff, but yeah, uh, yeah, just make sure this is on, at least when you're starting. Next up I would like to talk about is node view. And here I tend to turn off middle mouse button pans the view because it's annoying me and double click on node view opens the editor, which is very handy because when you're working with a tablet and not a mouse, you don't want to like try to aim at this yellow box to open preferences. Uh, for me, it's better to just double tap uh, with this option on double tap and it opens preferences, properties and all this stuff. In the timeline view, I always turn on reduce indentation. This thing is very handy for me because when you rig, you want to sometimes look into your timeline and by default, the way it's stacked, it, it creates this nasty, like a very wide, um, like a hierarchy. So if I add more pegs, you can see there is a hierarchy, but this one is small because I reduced the indentation. But if you just turn it on again, you can see now it's like this weird angle and it takes too much space so you don't want to have that i mean maybe you want but for me it's just annoying okay um another tab is advanced and in here it's this is another option that should be turned on by default i don't know why it's not uh it's support overlay and underlay arts what it does, it gives you, like it shows you all the layers that you have for each drawing. So rather than just have line art, color art, you also see button for overlay and underlay. Um, so it's easier to just jump between um, different layers on your drawing. Then I always turn on advanced display. With this thing on, I can have multiple displays on different windows. So it's not like uh, with this thing off, Whenever you change to a display, it changes in every camera view you have. But with this thing on, like you can have, for example, in here I have a default camera and in here I can have a display anim or whatever I create. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about scripts that I will use. The script was written by, I think it was written by Marcus78 like 10 years ago or something like that. He posted it on Toon Boom forums in one thread and I just copied it from there. And since then I've been using it every day. This I will just quickly show you if I have a new drawing, if I just drag it here and I want to rename, let's say, oh, let's say I have a few drawings. And I want to rename in all the nodes that I select. I want to rename only the WIN, for example. I just run the script. I look for WIN and I re replace it with, I don't know, rock. And what it does, it replaces whatever you're looking for. Copy paste pivots. This is another thing that I use a lot. So let's say you have your shape, it has a pivot and the pivot is set up in here. And you want to copy the values of this pivot, like position X and Y from here to another drawing, which is for example, 
something in here and it has a pivot here. What you do, you just go here, you select the, pe the peg, you just go here and copy pivot. And where do you want to paste it to? I want to paste it to another peg. I want to paste the pivot and both have the same pivot position. It's a small thing, but during rigging, it's very helpful. So you don't have to manually copy and paste the values each time when you want to do a copy. Now something about default script. So this is something that it's just basics, but if you don't know it, like it's something that saves your life. Uh, yeah, because if you want to color, let's say this shape and normally I, I saw people doing something like this, they color it and then they cut it and they move it to color art layer, which is too many steps. So rather than doing that, you can just press this and what it will do, it will just drop the line art to color art and it will change it to a line thickness zero. By default, you don't see it. If you press K, you can see it. And now you can fill it with colors. And voila, so you have your line art on line art layer and color art on color art layer. Out of the scripts that also exist in Toonboom 17 are the uh, envelope creator, uh, the icons, I just created them myself, but envelope creator, which basically creates the formers for you. And you will see later on during the workflow how I use them. But there is a nice way to use both of them. They work together. Uh, let's say I have a drawing and I will draw a rectangle and I want to apply the former to it. And by default, I would have to go here, select this tool and let's say envelope and go like that, which is too time consuming and then update it and do this, something like that. And you know, applying the formers takes time. But if you use this script, which is named exactly, just to be sure, it's named, yeah, as you can see, envelope creator underscore show UI. Um, if you turn it on, it will ask you how many points do you want to create? I want to create four and everything else I just leave it as is, but you have many options so if you can just play around with it. I select the drawing, I want to have four deformation points, I create the former bank, it's there. I don't have to do anything else. Um, sometimes it will create a very uh, nasty looking deformer which you have to update which is fine it's still saving you time on dragging points everywhere so you can easily specify how many points you want but if you're doing it this way it creates the offset point randomly if you want to be more specific about the point you can while having this thing opened you can use the second script which is named envelope creator act hint and I still want to have four points but I want to have my offset rather than here I want to have it here so I just press this there will be a red rectangle appearing around the camera view and if you hold your mouse sorry mouse like your tablet button or if you're using a mouse probably it's left click you can specify where the point should be and it will automatically snap to the shape so if you go like this, it created the shape of the deformer and placed the offset in here. If you decide to draw a shape, let's say a circle, if you start with a rectangle, it creates four points by default and the left uppermost point is the one where the offset will be. So now if I want to create a circle and I want to have my offset on top, but I want to maintain a perfect deformer around it. I can just do the shape. Okay, this is not a circle, but you get the point, something like this. And I want my offset to be perfectly in the same spot. And I want the deformer to maintain the same bezier length of the curves. So I still have four points, one, two, three, four. I just press create envelope and it still created a perfect one and the offset is where I 
expected it to be. But it works even better if you, for example, add more points. So let's say I add, add two points, one and two. And I do something like this. Because I added two points, this thing will be still an offset, this one point. And because I added two points, I have to change it here. I press create envelope. And it created a envelope which has points in exactly the same spot. So you can see it's, it's just a perfect deformer. So if you start any shape you're working on with a rectangle, the deformer should work perfectly. If you start with an ellipse, the bottom point will be your offset and it creates you eight points. So to have a perfect deformer, you need to go with eight points. And I think that's an overkill for any rig and any shape. So I know this will be my offset if I run the script. It created a deformer. That's exactly the same shape. So I hope this quick tip will be helpful for you. Um, another topic I would like to cover is templates. So you can have templates in here. Obviously you have your nodes like this on your node library, which looks nice and all this stuff, but you don't want to look for nodes in here each time you need a, let's say overlay art layer or how they call it. Um, Cause you could, you could just go here, overlay layer, you can just drag it in. Here's your node, it's named like this and you don't have any settings here. So this is a nice way of working, but it's very slow. So rather than doing that, I just create myself a library of nodes that I use the most. So for example, color art goes here and I change the names, line art, overlay, underlay, out patch, cutter, transparency node. And good thing about making templates is you can already predefine all the settings inside of it and you can just drop it as a template. So for example, I just created a transparency node which contains like transparency on 34 and it's turned off by default or visibility node which has already soft render turned off. So I don't have to go in here and look for visibility node. Oops, my keyboard. Yeah, because when I drag a standard one, it's named the visibility and this thing is on. So just to save time, I just create myself templates. So the ones with zero are like the basic nodes. The ones with one are less important. Then I have templates of entire like uh, modules or I don't even know how to call it. So whenever I want to create a drawing rather than just pressing control R renaming it, I go with my template, which already contains drawing, peg, line art, color art, auto patch and the composite. And it's named XX because this thing sits, like the letter X sits under my uh, fingers. I don't have to move my hand. And when I drag the template, it's already selected. I just run this script. I just press XX and rename it to, let's say, head. And now my entire template is built and the peg is named, the drawing is named. So that's one template. Second template is a patch, which I will explain more in depth later, but it's just made uh, out of uh, peg drawing and other nodes. I will show you later on how to use it. Um, and yeah, and last template that I created is a blank character template. So when I drag it in, it contains a name here thing that I have to change with my script with the find and replace. It contains a size box, which I will explain later when we get into rigging. Um, it has outer connections, which are handy. They're, they won't be used in here now, but the name here is mainly there because I want to name my character where one, one stands for like a version of the rig. And when I get inside the group, there is already a master peg. There is already a composite. There is a shadow, there is a place for master controllers and like in and out connections and a display for animation. If you're not sure how all this stuff works, uh, I'm not gonna go with total basics in here because that would be too much. You can find everything in documentation and there's plenty of tutorials everywhere covering every topic. Um, 
So what I do whenever I drag a template, I just select with Ctrl Alt. I just select the group and the name thing, and I replace the name here with, let's say, dog. Let's say black dog. And it changed the name, but if I select the group with Ctrl Alt, any node that's inside and it's also named uh, name here, it will be renamed with the stuff that I put in. So I hope you understand why this script is very handy. Okay, so in the next video we will finally start rigging. Uh, we will start with setting up the colors, picking up the colors from the design and setting up the a turnaround inside Tunmum scene, so to make sure that it works as a turnaround. And after that we will jump to rigging the first part of the body, which would be, I think, the head. Yeah, we'll start with the head. So see you in the next one.